greetings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for this day, the 12th June 2020. God is keeping us all. We thank God for his faithfulness. Through it all, we have learned to trust him more and more. Through it all, we have learned to depend upon him and his word more and more. And we have seen the faithfulness of our God through it all. Brethren, tonight, by the grace of God, we shall share from the word of God about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the promise of the Father to the church. We're going to read from John chapter 16, from verse 6. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. This was Jesus speaking to the disciples. It was after he told them that the time has come that he must go back to the Father. He must depart and go back to the Father. And the Bible says their hearts were filled with sorrow. Understandably so, because they lived with him. They, they walked with him. Uh, they, 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 he supplied in their lives. He taught them the word of God. And uh, he was just everything. To them so but now when he tells them that i have to leave their hearts were filled with sorrow but jesus said i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away it is the best for you it is in your best interest that i go away that the comforter can come at that time I believe the Holy Spirit could not really comprehend what Jesus was talking about. Mm. He told them that the Comforter will come. If I depart, the Comforter will be sent to you. Now we're going to see the work of the Comforter. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. 9. Of sin because they believe not on me. The Holy Spirit does not start to work in our lives after we've been born again. The Holy Spirit starts to work in our lives when we are still sinners. He is the one that convicts us of our sins. He is the one that, 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 that uh, reproves us of sin. He's the one that reveals Christ. He's the one when the word of God is being preached. He's the one that interprets that word to us. He's the one that makes us to understand the word of God. So he works so much in our lives. By the time we accept the Lord Jesus as our personal savior, the Holy Spirit would have worked in our hearts, would have worked in our lives. So he is the one at work. And he reproves, he convicts, us of righteousness. He is the one again who enables us to live the righteous life. Because he is the one that works in our lives through the word. When we hear the word of God and we receive it, it is the Holy Spirit that works in us to change us. It is the Holy Spirit that uh, uh, helps us to pray through born again experience. And it is him again. The word of God says, the Holy Spirit will bear witness in our spirit that we are the children of God. And he, the Holy Spirit, is the one that helps us to pray through sanctification. And he is the one that comes and indwells us. Praise be to God. So the Holy Spirit came to 
take it up from where Jesus ended it. So the Holy Spirit, from verse 12, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. At that point, when Jesus was about to depart, there were so many things that uh, they, need to, they needed to know pertaining the kingdom. But he couldn't, Jesus, tell them everything one time. But he left that to the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So he said, however, when the Spirit of truth is come, I cannot tell you everything now, but he, the Holy Spirit, it shows that the Holy Spirit was given a very big mandate from heaven to take it up from where Jesus ended it. So the Holy Spirit was to guide us into all the truth. The word of God is the truth. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the, whole, the, the, the word of God. It is him that reveals the word. It is him that guides us through the truth, which is the word of God. Because he does not speak of himself. But whatsoever he hears, that he speaks. So whatever the Holy Spirit speaks in our lives, he receives his, he receive it from the Father. So you can imagine how important the Holy Spirit is to us as the children of God. Meaning that he is the one that connects us with the Father. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8, it says, we do not even know how to pray for. We do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit, it helps our infirmities. He prayed through us with groans that cannot be uttered. And he prayed through us according to the will of God. Even for us to pray to the Father, we don't know how to do it. But the Holy Spirit does it on our behalf. So the Holy Spirit is so important. It's part of us. We cannot live our Christian life without him. There is no way that we can live our Christian life without him. So verse 14, he says, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of me and shall show it unto you. How much we want to receive from God? How much we want to know the purposes of God? How much we want to know the plans of God? Especially much in these days, the days that we are living in, the days that are so uncertain, the days that are full of confusion, it's only the Holy Spirit that can help us to navigate through life. It is only the Holy Spirit that can help us to know what to do, when, and how to do it. It is Him and Him alone because He will take it from the Father and He will present it to us. He will take it from the Father and He will teach us how to do it. The Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. We are going to go through to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The Bible says, as it is written. It is written where? It is written in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah wrote this. He said, I have not seen. He was prophesying. He was seeing ahead that there is something that God is going to do. Something that the, the, the eyes have never seen. Something that the ears have never heard. Something that the heart of man has never comprehended. The things that God has prepared 
for them that love him. Verse 10 says, but it is written, yes, the eyes has not seen, yes, the ear has not heard, yes, but God has revealed them unto us by what? By his spirit, hallelujah. Those things that the eye has not seen, those things that the ear had not heard, when Isaiah was writing, when Isaiah was prophesying, the word of God here says, but God has revealed those things unto us by the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. The, <laughs> hallelujah. The Spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Praise be to God. The Holy Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. In those things, the Holy Spirit will reveal them unto us. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. If we want to know the things of God, if we want to know the mind of God, the Holy Spirit and him alone is the one that can reveal them to us. If we want to know the ways of God, the word of God in Isaiah, again, 55, it says, um, the ways of the Lord are far away from our ways. Meaning that we, as ordinary people, cannot understand the ways of God. It is by the Holy Spirit that the ways of God can be revealed to us. That's how important the Holy Spirit is. So we must not ignore him in our lives. He is part of us. That is why Jesus said he is with you and he will be in you. But what man, verse 11, but what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Mm. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Bazalwani, we have not received the spirit of the world. Mm. Meaning that we cannot think the way the world thinks. We cannot do things the way the world does things. But the spirit which is of God, we have received the spirit which is of God. And that spirit of God is the one that reveals the will of God for our lives. It reveals the plans of God for our lives. It reveals how we must do things, when we must do things, and how we must do them. So the Holy Spirit is so important in our lives that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals all that to us. May God help us that we don't ignore the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says, do not quench him. Do not quench him. Meaning, do not ignore him. The Word of God says, do not grieve him. Well, the Holy Spirit is a person. He can be grieved. When we ignore him, we do our own things our own way. When we don't acknowledge him, we grieve him. And the Bible says we must not grieve him. We must acknowledge who he is and the work that he has been sent to do in our lives. We must give him 
our lives so that he can perfect that which concerns God's plans about our lives. For that is the work that he has come to do. May God help us as we are going to pray that we really pray and say, renew our relationship with him. The last verse which I'll read is um, 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 14. I'm not sure if it's the one. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Sorry, verse 14. It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The word of God says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the communion, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with us all. May we pray that God we renew our fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We renew our communion with the Holy Spirit. How often do you commune with him? How often do you commune with him? How often do you have fellowship with him? How often do you acknowledge him as part of you? That you cannot do anything without him. May God help us. We love him so much. And may God give us that spirit to long for him, to, to, to yearn for him. To love him, to love to fellowship with him every day of our lives. As we are going to be praying, God help us and the Holy Spirit is here to help us in Jesus' name. Amen.